Okay, big problem. I fell back asleep. It's 11.30. Uh, that gives me about six and a half, seven hours before dark. So, I need to get moving now. Uh, I've got to find a way to make some coffee. I still have to make the Trevoy. I'm not taking a lot of stuff, so it should help me move faster. Sometimes in an apocalypse, uh, ugh, in an apocalyptic situation, we don't have a lot of time. We have to move fast. The important thing is to not forget any of the stuff that we need. I'm going to get dressed, get my sleeping bag packed, and then we'll start moving. Uh, yeah, we've got to move or we're not going to make it. Move faster. Uh, I've always found that having a little bit of a time crunch. Uh, I don't know. Makes me think a little, move a little bit more confidently sometimes. Uh, because the confidence level needs to be, needs to be up here. So does the skill level though. The skill level needs to be up here, right? So, we're trying to move fast and then sit down right before we shove off and make sure that everything is done. First thing right now, we need a drag sled. Wide open spaces, fresh air, and I'm starting to enjoy myself. I say we mush on. time to call anybody or message anybody really I'll leave an Instagram post before I walk out the door let everybody know I'm okay and when I'm coming home uh, all right let's do it Matt Brown let's do it oh that sun's nice it's actually warm okay where's my coffee Make the drag sled we need good material I have good material up here at the survival shelter I was building before I need some poles some rope if I can be out of here in an hour I'll be happy that's filled with water plastic for the bed We've got these longer spears that I made for my Neanderthal project we're gonna use that because they're light and thin and strong I'm out of shape guys I haven't done this in a while just coming up this hill the legs are hurting yeah I need to go over see the bosses real quick before I go. Let's try and get out of here in an hour. Let's see, we got out of here at what? Let's say worst case scenario, two, four, five, six, seven. That's like five hours at best before it's dark. Let's just see what happens. We'll make it. Faster, dang it. Okay, so the trick to building a drag sled basically, you have two poles. You need to build a frame in between those poles. Best way I've found to do it is to build with two, two angles or uh, horizontal braces at the top and bottom of where this, the support section is going to be. Then put an X in between there tie all that together and you have a pretty strong platform might need to add one more pole in the very back or below the frame just to uh lend some more support to it so i had these they're heavy 
I'm gonna get rid of those. Heavy isn't good in this survival situation. These are lighter. Light is good. Light and strong is better. All right, so this has got to be our Trevoy, AKA drag sled. I don't want it to be super long. What we're gonna do, we're gonna build that frame right here in the middle of it. It'll be pulled by the two handles on the top and the bottoms will have less resistance because you only have two points of contact against the ground, making it pull kind of nicely. What I'm gonna do right now is get the boards or the poles cut to go here here and then an x like that and then we'll start recording again i've got to move fast i also need to get this uh this plastic that i got wrapped up get my bedding wrapped up uh get the heck out of here Let's see about like that's gonna be fine. Okay. I want to get them both the same size. One trick when tying two poles together, if you take and make notches where they're gonna go together, like this pole is going to tie here, right? So if I notch the top of this pole and where it's gonna tie, that's gonna help it hold together. I'll show you what I mean. So I just take here. cut some lines in it like this do the same on the pole here it doesn't have to be a lot and they don't have to be in any specific order what they'll do is when it ties together it helps that rope hold without slipping still be mindful of what we're doing hurrying with uh, with saws and stuff can really get us hurt throw the whole thing out I gotta move faster I'll let you know when it's done Okay, friends, so this is our drag sled. It's as good as it's going to get. I only used one cross brace. The two at the top hold them steady and bottom hold them steady. The cross brace here is going to keep it from, from wobbling this way too much. If I have, if I need to, I can go to the back and I can put another cross brace this way and then lash these together, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I was trying to avoid weight issues I'm afraid this will rattle apart on me though. I'm going to put the, the next cross brace this way in a survival situation, in an apocalyptic situation. Maybe we got to grab everything we can possibly carry and cut and run. We need to remember that even if we're pressed for time, it's like Napoleon Bonaparte once said, space we can recover, time never. 
trade space for time. So if I can't make it to my destination before it gets too dark and too cold to travel, I can stop along the way and I can make my camp there and move out the next morning. I can't come back here and get anything that I might forget because I'm rushing. So remember, trade space for time. Space we can regain, time never. I believe in you, you can do it. You know what, so can I, so let's get this stuff done. Uh, holster, uh, cold weather thermals, my balaclava, extra pair of socks, hat, uh, scarf, yeah, bag empty, got some food over here, jug. Friends, it's about 2.30. I've run out of time and I have too much stuff. I brought extra winter stuff. Uh, my batteries weigh a lot. One thing to remember in a survival situation is liquid water uh, weighs a lot. I'm way overweighted, uh, especially to be doing this still kind of injured. I have to stop and redesign this. It's just too much. That backpack is too heavy. The Trevoy is too heavy. I'm gonna take one thing of clothing. I'm gonna cut off everything except for the, uh, the film gear, the water, the food, the tent, and the sleeping gear. And my ammunition, of course. That means that without the extra uh, winter gear, if it gets cold while I'm up there, I'm gonna have to stop wherever I am when I start getting too cold and just get in my sleeping bag. Okay, I've gotta redesign this and I don't have time to film it, so. I got everything lightened up, guys. I had to make some sacrifices along the way. We're gonna be all right though, don't worry about it. All right, let's get out of here. And so the gentleman that I work for is giving me a ride to the bottom of the grade. It's such a late day that we're skipping all the highway travel, which kind of, the highway travel sucks anyway. So we're good to go. Uh, I fear we'll probably be camping the first night at the top of the grade. I just don't want to push it. It's gonna get cold after a little while. I'd rather just stop, build a fire, you know, hoorah. Ah, they need to mend this road out here a little bit. I can only imagine what the grade looks like. Okay, friends, we drove out of the sunshine a couple minutes ago. Gonna be in the shade the whole way up. Are you ready? I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready. 
Christ. <laughs> Uh, not many, Dave. I don't think I've been up this thing is. Really? Since the last time I hauled logs out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> it's been a lot of years ago. Wow. Are you serious? Right here? I had to back up and forth. Ah. Back and forth several times. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, he mashed him. Okay. No, whenever I see a snake heading up this way, I, I smush him too. I pummel him with these rocks over here on the side of the road and then drag them back and eat them. Appreciate it, sir. You work good. Oh yeah, heater works real well. It's like my pickup, that's about the only thing that does work well is the heater. It'll about run you out of here. Yeah, I haven't seen this in a long time. Wow. Not since all logs, huh? I th I think so. I don't think I've been up this grade in it's been over 20 years. Wow. I've been up it too many times. <laughs> uh, trying to think if I came up here. And I was up here in the old blue truck. Okay. They have. Since then, too. Yeah, I heard back in the day it was not maintained very well in the logging well, days. It was quite a bit narrower. Really? Was that what it was? Yeah, okay. It was okay. A lot of work along this bank. Yeah. They're always doing something up here because it's the way this is. It seems like it just overtakes the road after not long. They had a beautiful John Deere setting up here that they were using to grade it out with. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just gorgeous. How cool! Ha ha! That's a man right there. Hoorah! Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah. Wow. Sometimes in the apocalypse, guys, things work out. Be sure to take a, a hand out if we can get it, or a hand up, you know? Now it is cold up here. It's a lot colder than I was expecting, honestly. So I, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna start walking now. We've gotta make it to the corral 
first and that sign that's not far off from the legends then we'll go up to the legends hopefully he's home i haven't been in contact with him or anything wait a minute where is my coat my big coat or uh I stuffed it in here tonight. Yes, okay, see, I didn't think I'd mess that up. Okay, here we go, guys. I gotta get, get this stuff on and we'll take off. Okay, I haven't made it far uh, from where the gentleman I work for dropped me off. The Trevor is having problems. It's too top heavy and the back isn't spread wide enough. So it keeps trying to flip. I was worried that the sleeping bag was going to wind up dragging, so I've moved it up front. I don't have far to go, maybe two miles, uh, and I can get to the corral, maybe more, maybe less. So I'm just gonna try and take it real slow. I might, I'm thinking if the Trevoy keeps giving me problems, I might just haul half of what I have to the corral and then come back for the other half. Might be a smart move. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Come on, Matt. I really like to avoid having to redesign this right now. What I always try and remember is that I'm not trying to go fast. I'm not trying to be any time. I try and just be right now, right here. And when carrying and stuff, it's a lot easier to stay warm. So I just concentrate on moving a few steps down the road as far as I can, and then I stop and rest for a couple minutes and, and then move again. We're overweighted, it's a lot of weight. And now the liquid makes up for a lot of the weight. And so, as we drink it, it will get lighter. However, that in itself in a survival situation can be bad too, because we might not know where our next water is coming from, you know? How we drag it back there. Not bad. It's really hard to film right now too. I mean, that's part of the adventure. So I just gotta do what I can to make sure that y'all guys stay in it, you know? Got a couple miles, just nice and slow and easy. Okay, friends, I've been traveling about 40 minutes or so. It's really slow go right now. I haven't been able to record hardly anything. Uh, my uh, The way the Trevor is made, the, the sleeping bag is right against the, the poles, so if I set it down, it's gonna get my sleeping bag soaking wet. And that can spell complete and total disaster in a uh, survival situation. I don't know what we got. At this speed, another hour maybe. From here it goes uphill. Could be a little less, might be exaggerating. That's Chapaca right there. Right there. Had I known what the road was like, we would have brought Max. I catch my breath and I'll keep on going. I'm thinking. Hmm. Got a splinter somewhere. And a couple of them. That's all right. I'll dig those out later. I'm almost thinking about making two trips. And stash the Trevoy right over there on that stack of rocks. And then. Hole in one load, come back for the second one. 
that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make the travel a lot, a lot better. Like in a real apocalyptic world, it makes it easier because we aren't really under any time restraint most of the time. Most of the time we can just walk, you know? And uh, so I'm not above doing the leapfrog thing. That's where you take your stuff, you stash it, you haul half of it, then you go back for the other half and you kind of leapfrog your stuff. Because if I were carrying everything I need to survive for a lifetime, right? It'd be a lot more stuff. It'd be a lot heavier and transporting it becomes difficult. Yeah, I definitely got some splinters. I don't know where I picked them up. Maybe it was hauling wood with the guys. So that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to stash half our stuff here. Hike into uh, the corral. We'll make two trips. Then we'll walk up and see if the legend and his wife's home. And then we'll head back down to the corral and set up camp. Okay. Got to figure out what I'm taking then. Okay, friends, I split my, my load up into two parts. I got half of it up there and the other half here. I was just going to leave it laying out. Then I heard some rig way off in the background there. Now, mostly it's uh, it's just cowboys uh, that come up here and the legend and everything. However, there, we never know if there's going to be some random person or something you know so i think instead of just leaving my stuff laying out in the middle i'm gonna stash it over there uh inside the sagebrush and then make the push for uh for the corrals the sun's going down it could be dark by the time i get back to the corrals with the second load so i want to kind of move a little bit faster well, like i said i'm gonna stash this stuff over there and start hoofing it your battery's almost dead so i'm gonna have to charge that while i'm walking Feel a lot better about breaking it into two uh, into two groups though. It'll be a little bit easier. I guess with the tracks that the legend is probably home I hope so it's been a long time since I got to see him slow down slow but steady wins the race right I know what I do might not look like what the what others that do this would do. My survival, nothing's easy. Most of the time it doesn't work out. We have to learn how to, how to keep going in the face of adversity when we don't have the things we need. That's why it's important to plan ahead and be somewhat prepared, you know, that's why I have a really good sleeping bag. I have, you know, things that can double for tarps. It's like when I returned here from California. I didn't have any of the stuff I needed. Almost didn't make it because of it. I have enough experience so I was able to throw together enough equipment 
that that coupled with my ability to suffer, you know, has able to run out the time limit. I was also fortunate that it was kind of like the right time of year because I knew if I could just hold out another day, another day, another day, that eventually spring would get here. And it did. And I survived. And like my buddy Michael says, you know, preparedness allows us planning the ability to get ahead before the problem gets there rather than reacting to a problem after it's already arose arisen arised also another thing that i i know but i don't do very often is talking while walking uphill uses up valuable oxygen all right i'm gonna keep on mushing guys we got a little ways to go charge your battery while we go hoorah We made it. Ah, my friend has a posted private property thing here, Cole. I have permission to be here. Shout out to my friend Al. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay, guys, here we are. Okay. Man, had I known that it was like this, we would have gone and checked out that creek. We would have brought Max up here. I mean, for sure. Dang. I'm almost bummed. I mean, I'm almost thinking about stashing our gear, walking back and getting the truck. Wait a minute. <clears throat> That's not too crazy of an idea, is it? It's not. I don't know. I do know that I'm gonna be walking back with my stuff in the dark. Let's go get the rest of the stuff, guys. All right, yeah, that's good. Okay. Let's see. Probably take about three minutes to get back down. I'm on such a bad sleep schedule. You know, I think on foot, not carrying anything. I could get to Max and back. I could get to Max in maybe three hours. I don't know. I don't know.
it's gonna be dark in about 20 minutes. Well, too dark for y'all to see. We'll have a moon. It won't be up to maybe, let's see, what was it last night? Well, red sky at night, sailor's delight. We should have fair weather tomorrow, which could mean clear skies, which means cold. Clear means cold. The clouds hold the heat in. So with not, there aren't any clouds, the heat of the day will escape straight out into outer space. So uh, it's easier to tell on the water. If there's a red sky at night, sailor's delight, that means fair weather the next day. Red sky in morning, sailor take warning. That means they could storm. Uh, and like I said, to my experience, that's less uh, applicable inland. It's more, more factual when you're like on the coast or on the water. One of the hardest things about survival is being alone. It's easier for some people than others. Almost everybody can adjust, it just takes time. Even me, for as, as good as I am at being alone, I should say as practiced in it. I still get this melancholy loneliness in the first couple days of the adventure. Remember though, if you're ever in that kind of situation, just keep moving forward. It helps, just keep moving. And if you have a family or other people that you're trying to take care of or protect or provide for, their morale will probably be pretty bad in the first few days to a couple weeks even while everybody gets used to the new situation. So don't worry, uh, don't let that bother you or damper your spirits. These are all just things that the survivor has to be able to cope with and move through. It's better if we know that they're coming. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to, to tell you everything that I've found out in my lifetime of survival. Just what to look out for, what to expect, Nobody is ever born knowing this stuff. Trial and error. Learn from our mistakes. Try not to repeat them. Keep moving forward. I might walk up and see if the legend's home. I can leave my, come on, let go of me. Door had my grabbed. Okay, get this off of me. Come on, let go. Okay. Y'all can't see much, can you? No, you can't. That'd be the downfall to heading back for the pickup truck is y'all won't be able to see much. I didn't bring my spotlight, it was just too heavy. Already I have too much stuff. See out there guys? Right there, right there. It's Chapaca Mountain. Hi Chapaca. it's home. It's like the first home I ever knew. When I first got here, I wound up stranded on that mountain. For about a month, maybe a little bit more. Freezing and starving. All I could count on was myself. That's when the cowboy found me. I don't know how much longer I would have made it, honestly. I would have had to start doing things that desperate people do. I teach you some of that stuff too later. The stuff we can only do in an actual apocalypse, you know. Now for somebody, it's an apocalypse every day. 
All right, we're gonna walk up there to the legends, see if he's home. That's pretty, isn't it? It's almost full. Okay, we got a little ways to go before we get to the legends. Dang, that's nice. Well, if we do walk back for the pickup truck, uh, it'll still be a nice walk. Y'all might even be able to see. I don't know. Moonlight doesn't, y'all don't do well in moonlight, really. I'll be able to see as good as if it's day. I made it about halfway uh, to his place. I didn't see any lights on or hear a generator. So they're either uh, in bed or mellowed out or uh, they're not home. But when so, I just don't want to bug them tonight. So I'm headed back to camp now. I'm wondering about whether or not to just walk back and get my pickup truck. And that's the thing about these kind of, or this kind of lifestyle, I guess, is the first day or the first couple days, we want to do something else, kind of. And it's hard to sit still, kind of. So I'm wondering if that isn't just, you know, my reason for uh, heading back for the truck. However, I mean, honestly, it'd be nice to have it for when I leave, too. I'd rather not do anything tomorrow except for like camp. We only have three days. We're supposed to be back on the 26th and today's the third. I don't know if y'all guys could see anything. I'd think it was worth it, but like all you're going to be able to see is me. I just don't, I don't feel like sitting right now. You know? There we go. It's burr. It's definitely ain't cold. <sighs> yeah, that's a nice light. Yay. I don't have much firewood. Uh, what to do? Right? I mean, let's think about it like this. There's no way I'm going to bed before 2 o'clock, right? A.M. So, instead of sitting here, I could be walking. I could get my pickup truck. I could bring it back. And I wouldn't have to worry about carrying stuff out when I leave. However, I have to ask myself, is the reason that I want to do that because... For some reason, it's become difficult to be alone. Like, is it just that, that sitting here really just isn't what I want to do right now, you know? And then what about the trouble of getting up here? I mean, Max has been running well. Still, though, I could run into problems. I don't know. <sighs> These are all feelings that we have to fight in a survival situation. 
I mean, I've had them before. It's always like this. The first couple days are always like this, you know? Maybe I'll just try and get camp made. It's not that dark. I mean, seriously, it's, it'd be a really nice walk, you know? And I was expecting I have to walk all the way up here. And everybody was expecting to hear from me, too, when I got to the Legends. I just don't want to walk up and bug them if they're, you know, if they're wound down for the night. I don't know. I need to make up my mind soon, though. Yeah, soon. All right, it looks like they're home and up. Excellent. I kept wanting to go back and get the pickup truck just because I, I didn't want to just sit here alone. And also, I wanted to be able to let y'all guys know out there because I told you I was going to post when I made it to the mountain. So, this will be good. Normally I walk around in the dark because I can see when I'm coming up on somebody's house. I try and use the light so I can give them an early warning that somebody's coming. I think I'm the only friend he has though that does this wild man BS out here. So if he sees anything weird moving on the road, you can pretty much bet it's Matt. Okay, cool. We'll be there in a few minutes, guys. Well, that was a cool visit. The legend is one of those guys that I, I literally talk to about like everything. And we've lived very similar lives in a lot of ways. So uh, it was just so good. And I haven't seen him in months. I mean, I think the last time I saw him was in September, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the thing about like the, the wilderness or, or bush people or like, you know, cowboys when we uh we might not see each other for a year you know but when we do it's just same old same old you know yeah it's cold out here he said if i wanted i could come up and throw my uh my equipment down in the barn since i didn't get my camp set up tonight i don't know we'll see about it you know i'm kind of looking forward to camping in the corral if it does, well, with my sleeping bag, it can't get cold. Only thing I'm thinking about is like the firewood. And we'll just play it by ear. I find in most survival situations, that's kind of the best way to do it. I mean, I have loose plans, but I have like plan A, plan B, plan C, plan Z, you know. And I kind of just go in between them, depending on the circumstance. Okay, guys, y'all can't see much except for me anyway, so unless something happens, next stop will be the, uh, the corral. Oh, dang it, I just broke the handle off my freaking lantern light. Everything's made so, so, like, cheap nowadays. And yet it's still expensive. That's one thing about the apocalypse. Quality gear. A lot of the stuff we get nowadays is made so that it doesn't, doesn't last. It wears out inside of a year. They call it, what is that? Biodegradable. It's supposed to be a good thing. But now where everybody's wondering why there are so many microplastics in the ocean. Maybe it's because we've made all the plastics so that they'll break down into microfibers. 
I mean, it's just a thought. It could be what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Enough griping about my lantern. Uh, I'm too loud. Okay. I'm just setting up camp, guys. We're going to get a fire started. Get some food. And then uh, try and go to bed. Okay, let's get some light on in here. Our, uh, what do you call it? Uh, immune system. So like, it's always a trade-off out here. We're trading one thing for another in a survival situation. I'm gonna get everything put together and then uh, we'll hang out for a little bit. I'm gonna use it to roast my hot dogs. Okay. 